All righty, we're going to get started and we're going to record this for those that can't make it tonight because I know that it is still 4 p.m. on the Pacific Coast. But thank you all for joining tonight to everyone's favorite fireside chat, the rules. Um, but first and foremost, um, quick housekeeping. Again, a reminder for those that just joined, you are automatically muted and your video has been muted just to save on bandwidth and also to reduce the background noise. We are being recorded, so if you don't want to be recorded, you can back out um, and watch the recording later. Otherwise, you're accepting the fact that we're recording. This will be available to all those that didn't or can't participate tonight in the, the fireside chat here on our Cyberforce competition rules. I will unmute people at the very end if you wanna clarify your question or ask the question out loud um, for those that want to be able to further go down, but we'll just do that at the end. Um, otherwise, the chat feature is available and I'll try to answer as we go. Otherwise, I might leave some till the end just so that we keep things rolling. Otherwise, first and foremost, I'm Amanda Thiel. I lead the Cyberforce competition. I'm out of Argon here in the Chicago area. Um, you probably see 10 million emails that come from me. I'm working my best to reduce them this year as much as possible. Um, so if you need something, please feel free to reach out. Um, but tonight we're going to talk about the rules. Um, so everyone hopefully has had a second to like skim this really great document. Um, it is a what we like to call our like the best possible expectations document for the, the competition. Um, if you've participated before, it probably looks very similar to what you've seen in years past with obviously um, minor changes to what actually 2023 looks like. If you're brand new to the competition, this might feel a little bit excessive, but honestly, it's in there for everyone to have a level playing field. So I'm going to run through it. Some parts I might go really fast through. Please know it's just because I want to make sure we hit on the most important parts. So if you don't know where this is or you haven't looked at it yet, it's located in two locations. One is in our Cyberforce file share, which is a box folder that was sent out in an email that went out on Monday. Um, otherwise, it's also located in the Discord server on our documentation channel. So you can find it in one of both locations. Um, we try super hard to not update this, but in the um, if we need to update it, we do version it. And so we will always let you know if we have to version it. And that only goes if we actually have to do something because it is a requirement that um, for some reason something is not um, accurate in the documentation and everyone needs to know of a change. For example, if an IP address needed to change because of what we anticipated it to be in our AWS architecture and what actually had happened in our AWS architecture are different, we obviously want to provide everyone the most accurate information, but more to follow. So I know this seems lengthy and looking at 17 pages, but um, again, you know, we'll go through this. Um, maybe my full screen here might be a little cumbersome for some people, but um, the thing I want to harp on first, and when I use harp, I, I don't mean necessarily evil, is key dates. Um, those are the most important thing, and I know I've sent that around to a lot of people. Um, when I say a lot of people, everyone, um, a couple times now. First and foremost, today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. So yesterday, I sent around um, how do you access those rules, where you got the FAQ documents, you got your Discord invitation, and all of the things in that Cyberforce. We're calling it a file share this year, but the box folder. Um, all of our main information are all located in there. We've also duplicated it. So for those of you that either lose that link, don't know where it is, it's also available in the Discord server for you. So you have one of two locations. Tonight, again, we have a rules fireside chat. So I hope you all are warm and cozy here around our fake fire. Tomorrow night, we dedicate a specific fireside chat for our security documentation and our C-suite um, video that is our pre 
competition materials. So any questions that you want to dive further into on those two, I would probably save for tomorrow unless you truly can't be on that fireside chat because we have the subject matter experts that run that and they will dive further into those two pre-competition items tomorrow of what the expectations are, what are um, exemplary examples and what are kind of, I don't want to use, but subpar, like your status quo ones and how you can make yourself stand out. So that's tomorrow, same time as tonight on Teams. It'll be recorded. So if you can't make it, it'll also be recorded and sent out at the same time. Um, and as Anne keeps typing, you guys should also check the chat. So then with that, a key date is Monday next week already, is that that C-suite panel video is due. So I've made a couple comments to students who've emailed me about this. So you do not need your AWS infrastructure or your Cyberforce competition infrastructure in order to do that video. You can make that video without knowing anything about what's happening on the competition day. What we strive for in Cyberforce competition is also the soft skills of their environments. So the C-suite panel is about speaking. So we provided you a scenario, which you'll see later on in this rules, which is what you're gonna be speaking to. So just be mindful that that's due on Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So go down the list, 9 a.m. Mountain, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, you'll be uh, submitting all of that to the scoreboard, which by Friday this week, the latest, you will get um, access to the scoreboard with your credentials. So um, I will be sending those out to everyone individually. Also on Monday, you will get an email from me with your instructions and directions on how to access your AWS infrastructure. Um, if you uh, please be patient in doing and sending emails to me if you notice like, hey, Bobby on my team got their email and I didn't, and you start emailing me right away, going like, why didn't I get mine? Understand that we have over 100 teams in this competition. So that means roughly 600 plus emails need to go out. And so, you know, Outlook is slow. And so I just ask everyone to be patient. Equally so, some email addresses, as much as I try my best to test them all, bounce back to me. So I have to go individually then and check how I can fix that, whether it was a my mistake, a you mistake by fat fingering an email, an accident or whatnot, and then we work through it. So everyone will get access next Monday. Um, Friday next week is a late submission. You can still, so we understand you're in school, everything's going on. You might not get around to doing that C-suite panel video and have it ready for us on Monday. So you're like, but I can turn it in next week, Wednesday. That's fine. We accept it. Totally okay. The very last day to turn in that panel video is Friday um, of October 27th. And doing that, you will get some points deducted, but it's better than no points. And I tell you that because every year, our top teams are separate by just a few points. So just because you don't turn it in on time, please don't just not turn things in. October 30th, right before Halloween, we're giving you guys like an extra trick or treat. Here is your security documentation will be due. That's again, due 8 a.m do our math of what times everything's due, then that's due. Why is it due a week later? Because you do need your AWS infrastructure in order to do your security documentation. So we're giving you a week to take a look at what you actually got in your AWS infrastructure, identify your vulnerabilities and everything else that's in there. What are you doing? And again, tomorrow they'll go through this in much more depth than I um, to identify what you need. So it's due on October 30th. And again, we understand some things happen. This one has a shorter timeline of a late submission, but you can still turn it in up to November 1st in order to get some points 
for um, the security documentation. Again, writing. We do provide a template for this, so don't feel like you have to figure out, like, I don't even know what I'm doing, and all of that was found in the file share. Um, oh, Matt, you get access to AWS on Monday, October 23rd, right up here. Um, finally, the most important of days possible is Friday, November 3rd, and Saturday, November 4th. Those are the days in which we need you all to come to the Q Center at, in Illinois here to get yourselves ready for the competition day on the 4th. That will include our extended help desk hours for staff. So in the event that for any reason something's going awry, you're not certain of what's going on, you can't get your, your the red team to communicate with you, you accidentally messed up a VM, you need some sort of help, this is the day um that we have extended hours and on top of that we have every possible lab that is working on this on site to be there to talk to you um on top of it we have so much fun things planned for the day so you honestly don't want to miss it so if you can get there early get there early we'll have raffle tickets for giveaways fun prizes and on top of it you are having a mandatory red team and blue team check-in what that means is you'll have a roughly um, 15 to 30 minute buffer window of just ensuring that the communication window between red and blue is open for game day communication. This could honestly take five minutes if they're able to do it super fast with you, um, but some teams in the event that you've altered um, or not abided by the rules like they're outlined, um, we've had to go back and they've taken about 30 minutes so that things can be done in the, the way it's needed. Then the fourth is competition day, and that starts all the way at um, uh, opening remarks is at 930 in the morning. Competition starts actually at 10 and it goes all the way until 6 p.m. More to follow. All right, scenario. We're not going to run too much on that. Um, sorry. No, seriously, dude, please go. Sorry. Right. Yes. As I ask everyone to mute, then mine doesn't. All right. Um, so for purposes of uh, you all, I'm just really quickly going to have everyone understand you are the blue team. Um, I think sometimes people get so confused on like, we're not, we don't have to do this because um i wish often um i think you'll get a little lost sometimes in the rules because it calls out well this is an orange score or this is a red score so i don't have to do that right you're the blue team but this document is written for you so you as college students are to do all of it um every other team color that's called out in here we call it out because we're just trying to identify who quote unquote owns that scoring area. Um, so in essence, if it's a red score, that means our red team will be performing the scoring for it against you. If it's a green score, that means our green team is going to be performing the scoring against you on it. So that doesn't mean that you're not doing it. It just means that there's different skills that will be um, assessed on you based on the color of the score. So I'll let you all look at how the communication works. Just understand us as laboratories, we're kind of the white team here. Um, so if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, we're always available at the end of the day to help you with anything. So I'm going to drop down here a little bit. Um, as we've mentioned, Discord is our communication channel. Um, at any point in time, um, you can reach out to us in, um, through Discord and the help uh, tickets or the ticketing system. Um, we do ask to do the naming conventions. Number one, it just helps us to very quickly and easily um, with answering tickets to be able to also help you because if for some reason you accidentally put in the wrong team number into a ticket, um, if your name doesn't coincide, it just helps us to de-conflict things very quickly. 
Um, so students, it's a T for a team and your team number with your first name and mentors. It's a T, a number with an M or whatever kind of thing in your uh, in your in your uh, arena. Um, participants, um, you know, you're more than happy to you have to accept the rules. Um, which is the little lock icon in the very first. Um, yes, Lynn, you can add another initial at the end of your name. If you have two Jimmy's or two Amanda's or two Hunters in your team name, it's just a general naming convention. Additionally, if you don't like to go by Michael and you like Mike or whatever, you can put whatever makes sense. Just be mindful that we do have um, you know, obviously this is a large community of students that are participating as well as we have National Lab staff in the Discord. So just be mindful of what you say, what you're saying to friends um, in there, like they're just be mindful of language and, and whatnot. Um, what was I going to say now? Oh, help desk functionality. So just please be mindful and utilize that. Please do not DM the admins or the staff that you see in there. Obviously, we try to all ensure that you understand that we are the lab staff. But um, at the end of the day, the help desk tickets are there for us as well to understand where we can better our, our rules and expectations year after year. And if you directly message us, we tend to forget how to make them better because we just kind of ignore it or move forward. So doing that doesn't make things faster um, or putting in a help desk ticket, directly messaging Anne and then emailing me doesn't make anything go faster. It only makes things more confusing because we're we're figurating everything. So just trust me, the help desk works um, and we do everything by the book through that. Um, and again, Typically, we work through normal business hours on the central time, um, but we do constantly take a look at that after central time. So I know Pacific um, folks, you know, I know that's only 3 p.m. for you. Um, and obviously Eastern, that doesn't mean that we don't start till 9 a.m. for you. But, you know, we do take a regular um, look at um help desk to see if there's something that's in critical need of us to to answer whether that's a password reset or whatnot we'll take a look to make sure that um you know you're not hung you know hanging out dry um once you get your competition um you will inherit uh okay i'm frozen so please don't do this to me all right um you will inherit a slash 27 AWS um, virtual private uh, network here from us. Um, and again, any changes that you do make need to be clearly documented in the security documentation. Um, what you will need, and again, this will be clearly outlined in um, the documentation that you receive on Monday, is we use OpenVPN. Um, so for Windows users, you can use openvpn.net um, and you want to go to the community downloads. I don't know how many times we have to ask people to do this and they still just go to openvpn.net and just go to the downloads. Two very different things. Community downloads. Okay. Then if you're a Mac OS user, um, then you can use Tunnelblick. Um, otherwise, for Linux, you can um, sudo using the OpenVPN that's provided. Um, for AWS, again, as I stated, you'll get something from me. I mail merge it, so it'll come to you from me directly. Um, as I already said, please be patient and don't scream at me if your friend next to you and your team got something and 10 minutes later you still haven't. Outlook just as slow. Again, you'll get your scoreboard credentials this week. My goal is to have them to you by Wednesday, um, but it will be to you by Friday the latest. Um, so once you get your AWS infrastructure, if for some reason you do something terribly wrong and you did not accurately back things up or take snapshots, 
per how we have it set up and you need us to step in. There are penalties associated with that. It's 150 points per VM restoration. So for some reason you get it on Monday next week and Amanda goes in there and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to make a couple changes and I mess up and now we can't risk get it back to actually working. And I put a help desk ticket in to say, hey, you know, Cyberforce team, can you restore our all of our infrastructure? All six VMs times 150 points. We're already in the red 900 points. So our suggestion to you before you even start is to make sure that you follow the snapshot guidelines that we provide to make sure that you have a working order in case something is to happen. Um, this just helps you for further down the lines when you do have to make changes. So now we get to the good nuts and bolts. Um, so blue teams, you're not allowed to perform any offensive um, actions or measures against other blue team participants, whether they're your best friends or your, you know, pretend enemies, red team, green team, or the competition network. That's a that's a no. Anywhere in this document, when you read it, that states blue team XXX or team number, that means you should be utilizing that Excel document that is both in Discord and or in this, the, the box folder. You should be um, entering in the specific three digit team number. So for those of you that's team four or team five, it's 004005. Um, each blue team member should have access to their AWS beginning by October 23rd. Um, if you feel for any um, reason that there's something going on in your AWS instance that shouldn't be, um, you're more than welcome to reach out to the Cyberforce competition at anl.gov with um, documentation to show that you feel like there's something going on that's not um within your team purview that you've been doing um, but understand that there are some white team administrative accounts that will be on your system that are not used maliciously it's there because we have to ensure that the proper rules and scoring are in place as we stated documentation is due no later than 8 a.m october 30th and that c-suite panel submission videos due no later than 8 a.m pacific time on monday october 23rd your job as a blue team member is to secure your pre-existing required services on your provided traditional VMs outlined in this document later. You're not allowed to make any alterations or modifications to what we call our assumed breach VMs, which I'll explain to you the difference. The provided required services must be the services used for scoring purposes. You need to keep the provided name of your inherited virtual machine. So when you restore from snapshot, if it provides an altered name, you'll need to go in there and make sure you alter the name back to the original name that we provide. So you can't rename a VM to like my puppy too, or you know, Amanda's the greatest. While I'd love to see everyone's VM say that, um, Unfortunately, we didn't name any of them that this year. Um, ultimately, understand while some of these rules you may not love, they're put in place under the same circumstances for equal opportunity for everyone to succeed. Um, so at the end of the day, no school, no team um, has any um, benefit or disadvantage that's different than someone else. So if you feel like for any reason someone is breaching one of the rules, you can reach out to any of the competition staff and we can take a look at it. Any communications you make with us in regards to that are confidential. I'm not going to go run to someone and say like, hey, University of PNNL said that they think Argonne University is cheating. Um, so just feel free to let us know. Any updates to the rules? Again, as I mentioned, while we try really hard to not update them, um, you know, if we have to, we will make a, a very loud announcement to everyone. 
Um, so please just be out on the lookout for that. Um, if it does happen um, and we will version it and try to and we will remove the old one um, so people have just the latest version. So the dues. Secure your existing hardware. Services can be moved and configured on the traditional infrastructure as needed. Um, participants are only allowed to use freely available or free trials of software. So I want to caveat that though, because I know people like to gray line me on everything. Um, no inherent AWS security software may be utilized. So I understand we're on AWS, and so everyone loves to use what AWS has to offer. The purpose of this competition is for you all as super, super smart individuals to think outside of the box. How can we take six virtual machines and secure them with little to no budget? How can we think through potentially adding benefit to something that likely we would have to prove to our bosses would be an enriching um, increase in a budget that we would need without them giving us that money ahead of time. So that's where we need to really think through because a lot of this is not something we would just inherently be able to just utilize. Um, and again, paid software and paid images are prohibited from use. Um, the caveat to all this is everything has to be available to a .edu and if questioned has to be able to be shown and proven. Keep your services online on their standard ports for the duration of the competition. You can harden and modify um, the Windows Server 2022, the Windows Server 2019, and the OpenSUSE 15 VMs. And you can create EC2 VM snapshots. So there's a caveat there. You can create and deploy innovative strategies within the constraints. So there are two users, as I mentioned before, like uh, most things, that's called score check. You know, nothing's easy when we type things out. And the DER vendor, users on the traditional infrastructure box must maintain the same access that they were originally provided. Those are the white team credentials that are on there, and those are just utilized to check and script to make sure that things are, um, that the uh, items that are on the box are, whether they are there or not anymore for scoring purposes. And again, I'm not going to repeat it. We do a lot of uh, repetition in here, as you can tell just to make sure that people don't uh, ruin things. This year, there is zero need for you to create any additional VMs. So you don't have to, nor are you allowed to. Six VMs is total, six VMs is what we provide. Um, so six VMs, that's what you get, that's what you make. Any additional VMs, we will delete. Simple as, simple as we get. Um, you can't delete the ones that we provide. So if you need to like snapshot over, snapshot, if you try to do something wonky and becomes the seventh, you need to kind of delete what you did. Either it's a new one or the old one and figure out how you connect the new one. But at the end of the day, everything only is six. Um, do not uh, alt edit, alter, or touch the assumed breach VMs, um, which is the uh, Command and Control, which is our Windows Server 2016, the PLC, and the web server. And I'll explain more what that means. We don't block the ports on the SIM breach infrastructure. Do not brand anything other than if it's with the actual branding that's provided in your um, Cyberforce file share, which is the DER 8.9. But don't brand it with your university information, uh, your own made up stuff. Anything that would give away a, um, whether a positive or negative bias towards your university for someone who's looking at it. That includes the website, your documentation, your video. Everything is meant to be where if someone looks at it, your team 004, your team 158, or whatnot. That is to reduce any bias in everything. Um, do not change the IP addresses. 
Do not change the name of the machines. Do not perform, perform offensive actions. Any attempts to alter, hack, or compromise the scoreboard, you'll be disqualified. And again, please, um, in a world of chat GPT, and I have to say it's so slow, um, please do not utilize those programs. Let's use our very fantastic big brains um, and, and have some fun. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of these, but here are the services that you'll find on the boxes, what boxes, what ports. We ask you to keep those services up and running throughout the entire competition on these um, boxes that you have. So the nitty gritties here, scoring breakdown. Again, this is all for you. Red team is 25% with 2,500 points. Blue team is 20% at 2,000. Green team's 15% with 1,500. Orange is 20% at 2,000. And anomaly is 20% at 2,000. So you heard me talk a lot about assumed breach versus traditional um, stuff. So assumed breach, so red team scoring this year is broken down into roughly three-ish uh, categories, but it's two major ones. Um, assumed breach, for those that you've participated before, is no different. Assumed breach means that you literally can't touch your infrastructure ahead of time. We're literally assuming that red team is in your infrastructure already, or the bad guy is in your infrastructure. So we ask that you do not alter those three VMs that I've outlined already. This is so that you will ultimately run through an attack chain with them on the day of. So I want to clarify, you're not losing points by not fixing a vulnerability that you find in the assumed breach side. So find the vulnerabilities, find the problems, but do not fix them. Okay, let me repeat that. Find the vulnerabilities, find the problems, find the errors, but do not fix them in the assumed breach side. Because of that, on the day of the competition, you'll run through various plays throughout the day with red team on the assumed breach side that will ideally fix those problems with you or have you run through those plays. There's 10 assumed breach plays throughout the day at specific time intervals. And this is where, again, it is required of you to set up your red team check-in for Friday to make sure that, in fact, you have the ability to have that communication done with them. So, Again, right now, this is the planned IP addresses. Um, again, this is my fingers crossed, hoping I don't have to change it. If I do, I will own that. And so I apologize ahead of time here publicly, and I'll do it again on stage. Um, so um, the time limit for each attack chain is one hour. So if you don't complete it, then you just don't get points or you get some points for what you've done. There may be the ability to overlap some attack chains because they will be running some simultaneously because there's 10 of them. It's an eight hour competition. So there is some that will be kind of going along the way. All right, external ten pen testing or what we're calling our traditional infrastructure has two kind of um, that. There will be our scripted, which our typical traditional infrastructure is, again, poked with tons of holes, tons of vulnerabilities in it. And this is now where you need to find them and you need to fix them. Our traditional infrastructure, again, three, three VMs, find them, fix them, document, and everything is for the security documentation. Everything you do. What we're doing with our scripting is we're ultimately going into your system pinging to see if you've actually fixed the problem or not. It's not doing anything other than, hey, is it there? Is it not? If we can successfully ping it and get a, you know, if the script comes back as a succeed, then the vulnerability is still found and you won't get points. If it comes back as a fail for us, then that means you fixed it. Yay for you. And that means you get the points. 
If the scan fails because we just can't even connect to your system because either you removed our accounts that we have, which is that score check in the DER vendor, um, then you just don't get points either. So be mindful of that. Um, otherwise, it's whack-a-mole, which again is your traditional pen testing where you'll have a regular red teamer who's constantly just trying to get into your system on a regular play-by-play. Um, um, so that's where, again, you want to take into account how am I going to secure these three VMs in such a way that abides by the rules, but that wouldn't allow an attacker to be able to come into my system. We've had so much fun in pre-COVID years when we've had a lot of people take over and put up some really fun memes on websites and whatnot. So just be mindful of what the, those kind of timeframes would be. And you guys are running through the chat, so I'm going to run through all those questions at the end here because I just want to make sure I get through everything. So I don't, I want to think I'm ignoring them. Um, blue team scoring. So blue team scoring is running through a majority of those services that are required um, above. So when you get the scoreboard, you will see a list of services that you're required to input in, and some will require credentials. So you will input the services, the credentials, and the IP in which um, it's located on. And once we start a test environment, you'll be able to see, does the scoreboard actually have that ability to connect to your system and be able to get a service scan for it? If it doesn't, then ultimately we you can test throughout the day. Um, and I'm saying prior to the competition to see, like, is it a credential issue? Is it you know, are you blocking the scoreboard? What is the issue? Otherwise, come to the actual competition day throughout the day because the score check is done consistently throughout the day. You'll see points constantly being accumulated. Um, you know, you don't want to lose out on points for not doing that. In addition to that, because we are running a DER, I don't like to say DER because I don't know, it just sounds weird. Because um, we're doing a DER um, energy, there's a grid buyback service this year. So part of your score will be based on how much energy you generate and how much energy you're willing to buy back. Um, so based on your ability to sell back some of that energy that you are generating, which you will be able to do via your industrial control system, um, you will get credited in your services as well. All that will be identified in your ICS documentation when you get your um, infrastructure on Monday. So assuming that nothing gets taken down in your AWS, you really should have no problem being able to do the, the selling back of your um, extra energy that you're generating. But assuming red team takes down your infrastructure, you might have more problems being able to generate enough to be able to consume what you need and then also be able to give some back. Green team. Um, so I know some people love green team and some people despise it, but green team is built in here as a usability and a checks and balances. Um, so green team this year will be validating whether or not you as a blue team can do quality assurance testing. So when you get your website or um, in our AWS infrastructure, you will likely notice that it doesn't look great and it's broken and your job is to fix it in a user acceptance testing guide. We provide green team to um, the perfect version um, of what they should be able to do based on the green team test and survey uh, that they get at the end with perfect pictures that go along with it. Um, obviously, some things can be slightly different, um, and we do let them know that because, you know, we're not giving you the perfect pictures. Um, but um, at the end of the day, it is your job to run through that entire rubric and say, each of these needs to be true. Each of these needs to be correct. If it's not currently correct in your website, is on you to fix it. Pretty simple this year, at least I hope. 
I'm not going to harp too much on the orange team scoring because that's tomorrow for Ann and David. Um, but again, half the points are going to go to security documentation and half of the points are going to the C-suite panel. So do not underestimate at all that these two things that are while they're pre-competition do not weigh heavily on the actual final decision makings of the competition. As I've mentioned before, winners have been less than like 200 points from each other in years past. So neglecting to do something like this could make or break where you fall in the final um, arena. Doo -doo -doo. All right, coming down to the final bit here. Anomaly scoring, that's 2000 points. For those of you who have never participated before, but I've participated in um, like CCDC, which is I think the first time I've mentioned it so far. Um, I think this is purple color for them. Um, I could be wrong now, but we this is our like real world, like extra tasking that you have at work. Um, so at the end of the day, um, our anomalies are meant to be like all the filler that we have in a normal workplace. If you think through a real live day at a job, which some of you may have and some of you may not, at the end of the day, um, I don't sit in front of my computer eight hours just staring, waiting on an email. I am working on this for one uh, person. I'm talking to Anne on the other. I have a, someone else waiting on me. I have someone sitting in my office. I'm, I'm running around. So this is really to like simulate that kind of hectic. I have to make a decision on what is most important to me. Is it most important to me to answer the email first? Is it most important to me to pick the phone up from Anne? Is it most important to me to do the forensic file that my boss gave me? What is most important to me? And so that's what our anomalies are, is kind of that additive filler of like, you really got to make decisions on what you're doing. We'll provide you all those anomalies in the same box link that I've provided ahead of time. Um, and we highly suggest everyone download the zipped file that's in there ahead of time just so that we all save everyone's time on from Saturday. Um, and then what you'll be able to do is then um, we'll give you the code for decrypting it on the Saturday morning. All those come in various points. Some are super easy, like what color is Amanda's hair? I don't know, maybe it's blonde, yellow, purple, pink by the time we get there. But it could be really simple questions and some could take you a couple hours. Again, risk, reward, benefit is really what your team has to look at. Anomalies, I don't believe this year we have any that will be started ahead of the competition. They'll all be on competition day. Um, slightly different than last year. So again, uh, anomalies are not case sensitive, they're syntax sensitive, but there is some slight um, curvature to answers. Um, but again, as we ask, I know in a world of chat GPT, I'm asking you to please be mindful and use your big brains instead. We do provide a list of suggested software. You don't have to have it, but again, um, some of this might be needed. And finally, in my, at least in the, the major rules, penalties, as I mentioned, re-imaging of any of your VMs, it's 150 points per VM. We ask you to really utilize that naming convention for Discord. It really helps us because again, we all know in Discord, you can really name yourself whatever you'd like. Um, chronic password reset. We had to do this. Last year it got unruly. Once you reset your password in AWS, it is your password. So if you cannot remember a password that you made, it becomes a little questionable after a while. And then when you forget it a second time, it starts to get even more. So after two attempts of forgetting your password, we're going to put in a 50 point deduction per request after that for the same person, not the team. But so 
I don't know if it's a post-it note. You can be like me with my post-its all over the place here. If it's password manager, what? But save your password. DMing of admins or staff in Discord. Again, I can't ask you enough to not do that. That's why we have the ticket system and all the text channels available for questions or issues. And honestly, the best people to answer a lot of your questions are the people on this call that are actually students. People who've participated before, people who've already encountered that problem, maybe they already put in a help desk ticket and they got an answer. For all you, I mean, honestly, I've seen so much help from people that at the end of the day, like they're, as much as they're your competitors, they also really are here for the most part to help you. So think of it as much as, you know, it, it's meant to be a community. Failure to comply with a DN uh, or the VM or the DNS naming guides, and we have to go in there and manually change it. That'll be 150 points as well. And then if there's any offensive actions towards teams, networks, or hardware, and or the overall network, it's up to disqualification. Again, that um, includes AWS, that includes the Q Center network, that includes if another team feels like you leaned over and messed up a laptop that was sitting right there, anything of the sort. And finally, just so everyone is aware, as I should probably zoom out here, there are rubrics outlined here for the security documentation for the C-suite panel brief. And then again, as I alluded to, the famous green team survey right here as well. So everything is available for everyone right here in the document. Everyone's favorite rules. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. And I'm going to look at this lengthy chat that I'm probably missing so many amazing questions that I apologize. I promised you all I would start reading in the middle and I didn't. And I'm also going to kindly probably change so people can actually like ask questions. So if you give me a minute while I allow. Maybe it'll let me. OK. So while I read the chat here, is there any um, questions that anyone wants to come off of uh, mute and ask that maybe I didn't answer? So um, yeah, one question actually, and you may have actually gone over this and I just, you know, it slips my mind. But we are solely blue team, like, and all the other teams are basically grading us on how good of a blue team we were. In essence, yes, I guess that's how you could look at it. But yes, you are blue team, but you are. So when we put the categories together, it's um, we put it together because when you get in the scoreboard, you'll see a color array so you can kind of uh, easily identify where your points are coming from because you will start to see your score grow uh, throughout the day. And so instead of you wondering like, hmm, I wonder where I got points from in the last hour, you very clearly can see like, oh, I just noticed my C-suite panel video just got inputted or, oh, I just got a green team survey in or red team just scored my latest attack um you know venture so that way you'll see color coding so it's very clear to you um where you're excelling where potentially you're needing more boost what maybe hasn't been graded yet um so that way you can kind of help understand as well for your team of hey man we're not we're not doing so well in red and that's really a good amount of points. Um, but then you can also, okay, well, no one else on the board has red points. So maybe we just haven't inputted red yet. So that's kind of why we do the, the color coding and also by the, the names. But thanks for the question. Hopefully that clears it up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then uh, last question by sure. me. 
Uh, the assume breach where we're in contact with a red team member. Yep. This happens like after or like are they breaching us as we are talking to them? Like what? I'm sorry, you probably have gone over that, but what exactly like happens in that exchange? What are we doing in that moment in time as the blue team? So ultimately, during um, what they'll do is so on Friday, they'll ultimately, for, especially for the new teams, they'll explain to you exactly how Saturday will go. So over your chat, so it'll occur during in a chat box with you, and they'll explain to you, I'd like you to go to v at your CNCVM, and that's on IP XYZ. And in there, you should, I need you to go to file share ABC. Do you see anything interesting in there, whatever the case is? And as whoever's running red team, it could be one student, it could be two students, it could be your entire team that might want to participate in it. Again, it's a risk versus benefit versus, you know, score reward for you all um, at the end of the day. And so you could answer then in the chat, you would say, hey, I see uh, a malicious end of, you know, this particular, um, you know, file or a document or whatever. And oh, great, that's exactly what I need you to show us how you would remove that document or that's not what we were looking for. Try again. Do you want a hint? And so they'll literally walk you through what they're trying to find. Have you find and then what they're trying to do is have you learn how do I remediate it? How do I fix it? And they do provide some hints for some. Um, I think with like a slight like um, deduction in the points. Um, but at the end of the day, like it's meant for you to think through the attack chain process of they're already in. How do I get them out versus keeping them out already? Because in the real world, let's be honest, by the time we're fixing things, most people are already in. And now we're trying to figure out, let's make sure we keep them out the next time. Or we're having to backtrack our way into figuring out when were they first in so we can get back to when we know it was a clean copy. So we're trying to get to that point of let's teach people to also understand how do we get them out if we know they're in. Thank you. Juan, you have your hand up. Yes, yeah, thank you, yeah. Yeah, um, some of the question was answered on the assume breach, but how long will the assume breach take? Is it only one hour or is it? I'm still not clear on how that's going to work time wise. Sure. So it's so there's 10 attack chains for it. So there and each attack chain can take you can the longest they'll allow you to go on one is one hour. So in essence, if you break eight hours up, they're going to run the first one will start out at the beginning and then the next one will start at I don't I think like 40 minutes in whether you're done or not. Okay. And but so if the, your first one is done and you're done in 10 minutes, the next one still is not going to start until 40 minutes in. Okay. That, they're going on a very regimented start. But if you're not just if it's a more advanced one that your team is just not sure on how to do, then you might have two going. You could also just at some point say, like, we just don't know. OK, yeah. so even though they start every, every 40 minutes, you do have an hour on each one. Correct. So you could be working on a couple in parallel if you haven't finished it. Correct. And most but, you'll be working on is two. So. Probably you'll be doing that most of the day is a good assumption. <laughs> I mean, it just depends at the end of the day. I'm going to guess some of them will be easier and then there will be some that will be a bit more difficult. It really just depends. Obviously, you can hint it up, but that reduces your points and it doesn't really validate that you're at the end of the day, you know, uh, learning what, you know, the, the point of it is. Um, but and that's that's why we say like four to six people. You can put two people on red. You can put one person on red. You can put, as I said, like six people. You can put your whole team on there if you wanted. Um, 
you have to at the end of the day start assessing and i do this because i'm i'm on the business side so i apologize but you have to assess the risk you have to constantly look at the score look at your team figure out what makes sense of where does the most impact for your value come in right so so also then on the external pen testing you're going after the vulnerabilities that uh, were given to us already on the four or whatever servers we can modify, right? So you're trying to check if we if we really fixed the issues on the servers, correct? With the pen test. So the external pen testing will have yeah. um, scripts that are run that will validate that the vulnerabilities that we put in were fixed, okay. and then there will be also a whack-a-mole which will be just random like testing of red team trying to get in of your system with potentially vulnerabilities that you made by thinking you were actually trying to make it more secure. Okay, and that will happen throughout the day also. Correct. Uh, okay, cool. All right, thank you very much. Of course. All right, I got to look at who else I have. Uh, Xander. Yes, I had kind of a, a two-part question. Okay. Um, so with the assumed breach machines, the rules say that we cannot uh, touch, edit, or make any changes to those machines. Right. Um, the FAQ says that we still need to document all of their vulnerabilities. So in that process, are we supposed to just do that by lightly looking around, no tools, no scripts? Um, are we able to use things like logging agents or um, packages like uh, Sysmon or AuditD to, to help do log aggregation? Is that stuff we're allowed to do, or is that stuff we need to wait till comp to be able to do like Sysmon Audit D if we want to use those for the uh, the assumed breach section? So I would first say that like the assumed breach side, I would work. So you can use very light tooling, and I will validate again which one that we allowed last year. And I will circle that back to the group because we did allow some light tool scripting for people to be able to quickly look through the three um, without altering anything. Um, at the end of the day, um, understand that Red Team is not going to use the assumed breach as a uh, means to get at any of the pen testing side since that is its own portion of red team. So I'm basically giving away, you know, your red team <laughs> a means, but when they're doing their external pen testing, there's three and their assumed breach is three. So, um, you know. Yeah, it, it's just kind of, um, like if we wanted to set up something uh, some sort of log aggregation for the yeah. assumed breach to help us find logs quicker exactly. as that's something we are able to set up like those agents as long as we're not messing with the services. From my understanding, yes, but I will circle back with Red to figure out as to like how in depth the uh, what they have. But from my recollection that we had last year with their assumed breach log services and you know the this the scanning to to see the vulnerabilities was fine as long as the machines themselves remained the same. Perfect, thank you. Of course. And then Elizabeth, you have your hand up. Hey, yeah, are you able to hear me? Yes, I can. All right, perfect. So our team, we're mostly from like the Chicagoland area. We have a few students that um, don't plan on staying overnight at the Q Center. Um, we're wondering if the whole team is required to be there on Friday or if we can just come on Saturday. Normally someone has to check in on Friday. Um, obviously we would prefer if the, the whole team did check in just because it's one of those things that we've had teams not check in, a whole team not check in on Friday. And Saturday came and we've had two people sitting at a table um, and they were in the Chicago area. Um, so, I mean, I would love for the whole team, but 
at the end of the day, you know, we can't force people to all show up, but um, we do still ask that someone check in just again. It's more or less for us to ensure that the team is still like, um, you know, ready to come go knows where everything's at knows where their table is because honestly come Saturday morning it's so chaotic and hectic even though it's a 9 30 start for us normal central time people but um you know it's it would be better if just someone could just check in even if it's a quick like check in I saw my table and leaves okay yeah sounds great thank okay. you of course Javier Yes. Hi, Amanda. Can you hear me? Sure can. Yeah. Let, let me let me see if I I understand. Um, apologize if you if you tell it and I, and I didn't I didn't get it. Um, we we are allowed to have six VMs running in one moment. I'm, I, am I correct? We provide you the six VMs. Okay. Yes. Okay. So three of them are um, if I if I understood correctly the ones that are also being used for the external pen testing. So we're going to be using those VMs, correct? So three of them are considered traditional VMs that you'll be securing and defending okay. throughout the entire okay. competition. And you'll want to prepare starting on Monday when we give you the infrastructure. Yes. Three so we're, of we're them- gonna, We're gonna, okay. Three of them, are considered assumed breach, which you will want to take a look at and find what is in there, as Xander was saying, and identify the vulnerabilities, what's on there for your security documentation, so you understand the infrastructure you have, but you're not going to alter them. You're going to keep them okay. as is, Ultimately, you're giving yourself a tiny glimpse into what you might be prepared for on Saturday, November 4th. For when Red okay, Team so comes at you and says, Javier, I need you to go into box XYZ and tell me what you see. And you will, I remember that vulnerability already. Yeah, correct. So those are the six VMs that we will have to work with. Correct. Okay. Um, and the only ones we are allowed to modify for security purposes, it's the traditional ones. Correct. Okay. Okay, got it. So are we gonna have access for the six of them on Monday? Correct. Next Monday. Okay, great. Thanks. Of course. Sorry for that. I just wanna wanna be clear about it. <laughs> oh no, all good. All right. And I'm quickly scrolling because I know I'm past the time here on um so if you're still missing a Discord invite, feel free to send me an email. It is case sensitive. Um, so if you're trying to copy it or like type it in um, because we're security conscious around your links, um, no, it's case sensitive. So feel free to send it to me. Um, as Ann mentioned, zero points for video or security documentation is no bueno. So make sure you do it. I've already answered one. We have access to AWS. Um, so I think some of this will get answered tomorrow, but I'll quickly do C-suite video. You're going to return it in. Ideally, again, it it's a video, so YouTube, Vimeo, if you put it on um, a Google Drive, please, please, please check it as a non-logged in user and make sure someone else can see it. I don't know how many times poor Anne and I have had to like email people and say, hi, we still can't access your video because we have to ask for your permission or something. If you can make it an unlisted YouTube link, that would be the preferred option um, because one, no one publicly is gonna see it unless you hand us the link um, and you're gonna just submit it as a TXT file. This allows all of our graders that ability to not have to say Amanda and David and anyone else that has, you know, leading this to say we didn't get we can't see this and then we go back to you and if you don't respond to us as much as you turned it in, you know, if we can't grade it, there's really no difference if you're turning it in or not. So just be mindful of that, but it does need to be up and available 
all the way through the competition. So by the time you turn it in on Monday, it needs to be up and available through November 4th. Um, I do see some hands up, but give me just one second to hear. Um, could we add a last initial? I answered that. Um, quick question. Uh, so for naming conventions, if you want to be T1 versus T001 in there, go ahead. Not a big deal for me. Um, Austin, I know you love the VPN, so. Woo -woo. Um, I don't know what RTFM means, so tells you how old I am. Uh, are we allowed to install? Oh, Austin asked that question too. Okay, there we go. Will you send out the recording to everyone? Yes, I will. Recording will go out here shortly. I don't know what that means. Oh, external pen testing. How can we have something that's not fully secured? Um, sorry, who is their hand up? You ask your question away. Jacob, go ahead. Hello, can you hear Hi. me? Hi, yes, I okay, can. Okay, great, okay, sorry, it froze up for a second. Um, no, you're um, good. So I read the um, rubric for your C-suite uh, briefing, and I had oh. a question about uh, one of the points on the rubric. It mentioned cost. Are we to mention the cost of certain aspects of the briefing and the changes that we would be theoretically implementing in man hours, or would we do that in a calculated cost in dollar value based on estimated man hours along with other factors? I understand that it's free tooling, so the only cost would be the man hours involved. So I'd just like to ask up front now. You want me to give an answer, Amanda? Yes, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're thinking about this, what would be important to the C-suite? Would they want to know man, man hours? Would they want to know overall co cost? Would both be helpful to them? So think about it in terms of the C-suite. Understood. It's just that I didn't know like what yep. the hourly wage would be in theory. So I didn't I didn't know if I should provide just an estimate based off of like an assumed you know, wage calculation along with, you know, like the hours involved with implementing it. Yeah, so I would think about it in terms of um, if I'm providing man hours and uh, that's going to mean something to the specific person I'm talking to, but they might also like a ballpark figure. So, you know, maybe I calculate a ballpark figure for them. But uh, what makes sense to the C-suite? So, Anne, th this is David. If I were to weigh in, you're going to have all of those in your back pocket, but the C-suite's not going to, you know, they're going to ask you how much it's going to cost, and you're going to say, you know, X dollars, and if they ask you why X, you better have a spreadsheet to back up that answer, but they don't want to see the spreadsheet. They just want to hear it's X dollars for this, Y dollars for that. Understood. Thank you very much. I'm Does that work for you, Ann? Works for me. Now you know I would have told you if it didn't. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, so I'm going to answer some of this. Um, so someone asked, so just to confirm and start hardening our non breach BMs as soon as we get AWS. Yes. So I, um, I, I don't like to compare us to other cyber competitions, but from my understanding of other competitions like um, CCDCs and others similar to um, that you get your infrastructure on the day of competition, we are not like that. I give you your stuff ahead of time because I want you to do something with it. So please do not get your stuff on Monday and just do nothing with it. There are some things obviously you can't do things with the assumed breach, <laughs> but like um, your traditional VMs are there for you to look at. The green team website, you need to fix 
Um, there's so much stuff in there that like, you know, you have your C-suite video to work on. That's a, an amazing soft skill that I've, you know, I know everyone loves to hate, but like it's in there for a reason. The security documentation is in there for a reason. So like, you know, there's so much in there impact for the benefit of you. Um, I love everyone's jamming on anomalies here. Riley, go ahead. Quick, uh, going Wait, back uh, to go the C. Oh, sorry. sorry. You're echoing on yourself. All right, it shouldn't echo anymore. Sorry That's about okay. that. Um, so as far as the C suite goes, would it be beneficial for us to have a references page where we can, you know, cite sources for specific costs? Um, if we are quoting, you know, different. Um, information that we found that is, you know, beneficial towards the um, the presentation. Like, would that be good, or is that is that too much? I leave that to Anne. She's the she's the lead. You repeat that. I got distracted. Uh, he asked, like, would it be beneficial to have like a references? for like resources and whatnot that they have, or is that too much? It's for the C-suite? Yeah. It doesn't hurt to do something that provides that, but you probably don't want to spend a lot of time on it because again, you are talking to the C-suite. They want to know okay. that yes, right? They want to know yes, you, you actually know what you're talking about, but they don't need you to talk about why you know what you're talking about. That makes okay, sense. Okay, no, that's perfect. Thank you. Go ahead, Marvin. Hey, just a quick question. So for the security documentation that's a part of the Orange team, um, that documentation, is it following the assumed breach VMs or is there going to be the other VMs that aren't breached that we're and doing? It's the all the VMs. All of the VMs. Okay. Yes. But the assumed breach ones are the ones that we can't modify, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Mike. But you can talk about how you would modify them. Sure can. All righty. Um, I think I ran through all the questions in there. If I missed something, I apologize. And, and again, I will get back to you all on the red side for the assumed breach on exactly what the threshold is on um, the scripting and the logging tools. Um, but um, to David's point in the chat, I just want to echo that if you are staying at the Q Center or if you're not, please note that it is a party to be there. And this year I've made it my mission to make a party. So if you are there, please make sure that you stay after the competition because there is an after party for the competition. So um, after the competition, we will have an after party. I have a DJ, we have raffles, and we have fun. So stay after the competition and we will do awards after that because no one cares about who wins. It's about that you came and you had fun and you learned something. Um, so either way, um, if you have questions or not, um, feel free to reach out. Um, Again, for anyone who didn't get the Discord invite, if I could easily like get to my email, but it gets too wonky, um, feel free to send me an email. Otherwise, um, the recording will go out later today once Teams does its you know thing, and um, I will throw it up on YouTube, send it out to the group so everyone has it. Um, join us tomorrow for an even more fun, fruitful fireside chat on the C-suite panel and security documentations. Bring all your questions for them on that. And with that, unless there is any final questions that I can hopefully answer, I'm gonna leave it going once. And yes, I guess I should answer here. Lily, even if your team does not stay at the Q Center, 
stay for the after party. So if your team, because I understand some teams are choosing not to stay at the Q Center, you are more than welcome to stay for the after party. You can come to all of the other um, stuff that we have. We have fire. Um, again, I'm hoping, but Chicago this year is a little bit colder. So for those of you that don't live here, it's currently 56. So bring yourself a little bit of a jacket, um, but we have bonfires. There's a bar which does not just serve um, adult beverages, but there is fun games. We have homemade bag sets that my coworker made. We have tons of yard games for inside. The sun, so much fun. So just come hang out, meet too many people, and let's just have fun. So with that, what my hair color will be, we'll just have to wait. That'll be the nail color that we'll have to figure out. Pink hair. Um, so yes. Anywho, I will see you all tomorrow for a little bit for the fireside chat. Thank you. Have an amazing night, everyone. And I'm sorry that my little one joined us. Have a good night.